Hello everybody, it's time for Vita 16. Why? Well, why not? Uh, it's April 16, 2012. And it's about just a little after, well, it's quarter to four in the morning. And it's time for Comments X. Uh, this Comments X is going to be dedicated to Cassandra at Nerds Are Up because she was feeling, feeling kind of, uh, let's say regretful about her some of the choices she's made in her life and that doesn't mean she necessarily be made bad choices it's not talking about it sometimes uh, when you choose a particular path in life uh, the complications that will pop up in your chosen career your chosen field uh, when you are really, really tired, and you've been working late nights. Uh, and if you and if you've watched her videos, she's been working very late nights, and she actually has a hard time sleeping there. You know, getting to sleep early, uh, early enough, and that was sort of one of her goals. Uh, a, a, a fatigue thing sets in, which kind of makes you a little depressed, and makes you uh, think about the choices you made. It turns out why you actually went down the path you did f and made the life choices you made and wondering if you know if you should really be there and I think the best the easiest way to sort of explain it is to say that you know she's not alone in this this is not you know it's it, you, you can say to somebody oh, oh don't worry about it it's gonna get better but a lot of times you don't know that uh, that it is gonna get better and sometimes you know uh, it could actually get worse at certain point in times because there are going to be trials and tribulations that come up and so the best way to go about uh, sort of dealing with this is seeing if other people have got, gone through the same thing and uh, I could say I've done the sa exact same thing so I'm going to dedicate this whole section to her and sort of briefly describe how I came about and uh, y it was again one of those unusual choices I, you know, I didn't want to do the standard thing out of high school that everyone else was doing. So I wound up going into astrophysics. And just into my second year of astrophysics, and this was uh, more than 20 years ago. Uh, so she was a baby at the time, or just about being born, or, just, or a baby at the time. Uh, the university that I was at started, uh, well, not yet. there were a variety of causes, and one of the causes was they were getting their, they were getting their budgets cut. There was a round of massive budget cuts where uh, a lot of scientific programs were being cut, and one of the major programs that were being cut was the, uh, uh, the astronomy and physics department, even though the astronomy and physics department, where they had some top-notch programs there, um, the axe fell pretty heavily and there was sort of a, a pessimism going around saying, well, if you're going to go become a scientist, everyone has to go to the States and um, otherwise you're not going to be able to pursue a career in science here in Canada. This was kind of the attitude of the scientists and the different professors and they all call, they called everyone into the office and sort of uh, talked to people about what they wanted to do with their careers and stuff like that. And my decision was because <laughs> Ironically enough, uh, I, 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 I'm an American. I was born in Boston uh, to parents of Greek and Middle Eastern descent. And uh, the attitude of an American, and this is what I could view as, an, as the American attitude, this was the view that I had back then of, of um, the American view, was that if the government wasn't going to do something for you, got up and did it for yourself. And so my decision was, well, uh, why not set up my own research institute? And the thing is, is that one, no one at, at that point in time, in the second year of, of university, had ever thought of doing that like that. And, and and when I went when I went and approached several professors about the idea, uh, they all thought I was nuts and crazy. Uh, so <laughs> but the thing is, is that 
I wasn't deterred from this. A lot of times, if I set my mind to doing something, I get up and I do it. So, uh, I got three. I, I was uh, I got close to about like think close to three hundred dollars or something like that uh, for my birthday. Uh, so about birthday, I spent all my money, all my birthday money, on incorporating uh, my research company Delta R and D Inc. I bought a tiny, uh, my first. Uh, corporate phone and install the telephone line in my bedroom and in the corner of my bedroom that I have set up as my office uh, and where my library, my first library had been. Uh, Delta R&D Inc., my uh, research institute was born and that began my career. And the thing is, is that th the area that I had been studying was uh, quantum physics. And one of the areas that sort of particularly interested me was the random walk. And the random walk is a very bizarre type of, uh, of, of uh, scientific method uh, where there's no purpose and there's no conclusion. Because in quantum physics you can't predict things, things remain random. You can only understand things and set your goals to a degree of probability and there'd be no certainty or no absolute in that. So there was no, for me, there was no purpose to have a purpose, which was this, uh, your classical scientific method was you did an experiment to predict whether or not your theory was correct or not, you sort of prove your model. Uh, but from my understanding of quantum physics, this wasn't how quantum physics worked. And when I started looking into what other research reaches into the sort of the history of what was going on in physics. This was when I began my research institute. I started, look, I started looking elsewhere beyond the actual textbooks into uh, what was around in the, in the physics environment in terms of what was, uh, and this is, this was pre, this was pre-internet, so there wasn't the internet around. I actually had to go out to bookstores. I had to go, you know, uh, I had to go out to the library. There's a lot of sort of traveling around. It was kind of, it was kind of interesting because uh, I was looking for something, but I didn't know exactly exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> and this is what sort of popped up the problem. You know, uh, people say, oh, you got a business now. And a lot of my, lot of my Greek relatives uh, saw that I moved into this business. They would say, oh, yeah, you're moving into a business now. Great, great. You're, you have to go to the bank and get a loan, right? You, you want to go, when you set up a business, you go to the bank and get a line of credit or a loan. So I said, okay, let's go to the bank and <laughs> you know, open up my bank account and, get, uh, and, and uh, get a line of credit. So went into the bank, met the bank manager or one of the account managers, set up an account, and they asked, okay, what does Delta R&D Inc. do? <laughs> I just froze. How, how, how do you explain to somebody that your whole entire company is based on an idea surrounding quantum physics and the random walk. No company has ever been set up on that basis. I mean, so I try to explain to them a little bit. I went into a little bit about the fundamentals of calculus, the, uh, the concept of a limit, and asymptotic and asymptotic limits. And <laughs> <laughs> kind of finished, just sort of, not really finished, it was took a pause to see what this look on their face and basically it was like a blank, <laughs> vacant look like, what the heck, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? <laughs> and that, that was, my, my beginning was like that, um, uh, and I said, until I really got my, uh, I, I, I got into my PhD level, uh, a, a large chunk of what I did, most people had no idea what I was doing. And I, tr I tried to explain it to them, and they saw me working with, uh, still studying food from textbooks. I was still hanging out with kids, uh, because they're the only ones really who were studying at all in, in, in the church at all. Uh, so I hang around, I do homework with every, all the kids who were doing homework, because uh, a lot of times uh, they'd bring their homework to church and they'd just hang out in the church. I mean, the parents of that generation. Uh, school work was kind of secondary and they dragged, dragged their kids around every, everywhere with them so if they went to church uh, or they were working at a restaurant 
the kids went along with them, and wherever they went, the, the school books went, and they just sort of sat around and did homework uh, while their parents worked, or were at church or whatever, and that's sort of how I started hanging out with uh, the younger crowd, and I started watching um, uh, when I was doing doing uh, studying my cal studying calculus. Uh, I was watching. Uh, I started watching uh, Sailor Moon while I was doing uh, doing my calculus, and that's how I started off with the anime and the path I'm on now uh, for the type of anime that I like. Uh, but it, it, no one understood what I was doing, and it was, it was really no way to explain to people what I was doing. And there were, and, and the thing is, is when, when, you, when, when you're doing something like that, despite the excitement, there's also the uh, understanding of risk. And sometimes you could ignore the risk that you're taking with your life, in terms of where you're going to end up going with your life. And sometimes, particularly when you're tired, and you've been doing a lot of studying, you've worked up late nights, up late nights, uh, the uh, the fatigue you end up feeling kind of it, the the for, kind of forces you to look back and look sort of, sort of make an assessment of your life in a way that you end up how did I end up getting here, and you kind of regret taking the path you take. And I guess at the older you get in this, uh, and you go down this path, particularly uh, if you don't end up making a million dollars right away, because most people say, "Oh, you're getting the, you know, that you that, that you, you assume you're going to end up hitting a gold mine and not simply be chasing something around uh, for 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 a couple of decades." Um, then sort of questions start to pop up. There were several suggestions, f not only from myself. Uh, so you know when we, you know when was tired, but you you get comments and uh, suggestions. Well, maybe Daniel, you should go see someone professionally to you know to sort of work these things out. With it doesn't really seem like you know where you're going. <laughs> but the thing is, is that is that <laughs> yeah, I didn't know where I was going. But that was actually that was actually part of uh, the quantum physics random walk. Well, the whole purpose of the random walk was is, is that is to literally take that random walk. And that's why there's no purpose and there's no conclusion is the, is the random walk doesn't have that because you can't predict things. Things are all, all, all probabilistic. They're, they're, they sit within a, a, a realm between random, randomness and, uh, and some degree of certainty. Not, and, 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 and this is what I'm saying, not a full, not full certain, not certainty, some degree of certainty. In other words, you will never, gain a full understanding of what you're studying. Everything continuously moves off. And what I had done during that period and started doing another period because there are just times where there was really nothing to do. I really couldn't figure out where I was, gonna, where, where I was gonna, supposed to go next. And uh, my library, I kept buying, going out and buying new books and going around different bookstores and reading different things. And I started taping the shows on uh, PBS uh, the various different documentaries, sort of figure out what they were doing on there. Uh, you know, just sort of trying to figure out where I was going to go next. So it was just at that point in time, at uh, that point in time, uh, building my library, and that's all I was doing at the end. In the, in the, in the, in the, the first six years was really basically building my library and, and reading. And, and so, when you're re building a library and reading, there really isn't a, a lot of uh, of uh, what do you call. Uh, The, your, your, your time that you have is really kind of scattered, and to pay for everything, uh, what I did is I did uh, freelance work. I did uh, freelance IT work. I did consulting work. I, I ended up helping my brother get into computers. I set up a business for my my my, my dad and my brother, uh, doing uh, computer training and a whole variety of odd different jobs that sort of paid the bills and everything like that. And that's all it was. The jobs weren't anything specific. They were just simply there to pay the bills. And so I had an, a, a fair amount of free time on my hand, uh, and I started doing puzzles. You know, I expanded my, my, my library, expanded from my room, got too large for my room, and things started spilling over into the basement. And so I started fixing up the basement as my sort of my second office, uh, where I go down, you know, I'd be down there around 3, 4, 5, 4 o'clock in the morning, 
and I'd be uh, working on puzzles that have ra uh, you know an oldie radio station on or something like that uh, and I'd be sitting there doing puzzles started off with three four hundred piece puzzles but quickly found they got too easy and then moved up to I uh, saw these puzzles that were uh, 1500 piece puzzles these presented a huge challenge <laughs> so but, I did, but the thing is where you could easily find the edges you work from the edges and you start working on the different clumps and then you there were some areas that you really couldn't do it because they were so alike that you really couldn't mash them up so you started having develop an algorithm you had to develop an algorithm a sorting algorithm to figure out how you were going to start fitting these pieces together and so I started writing my algorithms down because I was still studying uh, computer science at the time and develop an algorithm for uh, uh, doing uh, 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 puzzles. And I didn't really understand what, you know, how these things would impact me or benefit me later on. These were just sort of things I was doing, sort of randomly walking around, picking stuff up uh, as per the random walk. But there were nights, there were times when, you know, you just literally felt that uh, everything was passing you by. You weren't the greatest scientist out there. You weren't Einstein. You weren't, uh, uh, there were people who were, you know, easily much better than I was in physics. There still is. There were easily people who were much better than I was in IT and in computer science. And it, you, you wound up feeling like, you know, why the heck am I doing this? And but a lot of it, I realized, it was simply fatigue. It was simply the point in times where I was feeling tired. And as long as I got a good night's sleep afterwards, or a good, it was not really a night's sleep, but a day, a day sleep, then things would be fine afterwards. And, it, I, and the thing is, you had, I find I had, I had to do things to sort of change my day up. I had to go take a walk. Uh, and, and that's when I started to sort of me strolling around. And I, 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 my walks were actually not, not short strolls. Uh, I've literally walked all over Toronto. Uh, I've got I've gone out for hours at a time. The the longest walk I've ever taken uh, was essentially about ten twelve hours at a time. You know that was I had done that and uh, I've walked uh, basically from downtown Toronto uh, to uh, the outskirts of my neighborhood. If you want to look up uh, where this is where it was at the time. Uh, there's a mall in, in Toronto right off the 401 and, 401 and Don Valley uh, called Fairview Mall. I walked all the way from uh, Toronto Island. There's an there are islands they go they go not down. There's Central Island. I walked from T Toronto Islands. Took the f I went on the ferries there to the island. Came back and then decided, eh. Let's walk up Young Street and see what's on Young Street, you know, up, up the entire length of Young Street. <laughs> and it, it wasn't, it, 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 this, is what, this is what happens in my life. A lot of stuff isn't planned. It just, you know, I get a question popped on, what, what if I did this, and I follow down that path to see kind of what happens. And, and you know, 20 years, anyways, 20 years on, Things are going well. I've got my own place. You know, I've got my uh, I've got my own unit here. I'm living in my libraries now. My libraries are quite large now. Uh, I'm doing a lot of work with my dad. Uh, they, we ended up selling um, more than more than ten years ago. We ended up selling the computer business. My, bro my brother got tired of actually being in business and realized that when you have your own business and you're doing contracting work, uh, it's not nine to five. It's twenty four seven because you always have to become looking around and, and thinking about where you're going to uh, get your next income from because no one's there to give you the, that standard paycheck from nine to five. And so my brother went out into the work world and went back to work in um, IT, uh, but he was r still really shaky at the time in terms of his confidence in, in, in IT. And so what he used to do is he used to, uh, whenever a customer called him, uh, he'd put the customer on hold and say he'd have to talk to a senior manager to, you know, his back support. And so he'd put them on hold and he'd call me and I'd be his back support. And I supported him for a couple of years like that, but now he's more or less on his own. And you know, my dad went back to uh, uh, primarily, he, he was always a priest, but now he went back to primarily being a priest and primarily doing 
his theological work, and I had come up to the point where I had done enough of my, my research to the point, and my writing was at the, to the point where I could now write and work with him. So, it, it, you know, things, even though they take a long time to develop, and you never, uh, you know, I, I haven't made millions of dollars and stuff like that, uh, but that was never the point. The point was to follow what I wanted to do in life, to follow my dreams. And while it points at certain several points in time in life, you are going to feel tired, you're going to feel exhausted, you're going to, and while you're feeling tired and exhausted, this is where you're going to start feeling the fatigue, and you're going to start feeling uh, really depressed about the choices you've made, and uh, the other thing is that if this is what you want, and this is the sort of the feel you want, you got to understand that this is going to be normal that this is going to occur at some point in time. And there are going to be rough scrapes. This is the risk of, of being your own boss. You know, being your own boss and sort of going your own direction, that's where it is. And I said, well, well I'm, I keep watching your show, Cassandra. This is, a, this is for you, Cassandra. Uh, I keep watching your show, and if I see you getting in any trouble or if you really start feeling down, I'll put out some more, but I'll give you some more suggestions if you want. Uh, about where you can go. I've been down your road. I've been doing this now for 20 years. Uh, as I said, and this is what I'm saying is that what, you know, I'm not going to tell you that things are going to get better because it doesn't matter how much better things get in terms of what you end up doing. As long as you're pushing yourself, and this is what happens when, you, when you're out on your own like this, and you're pushing yourself, you're trying to achieve these goals, there are always going to be days when, you f when you're so tired you're going to feel really bad. And that's never going to go away. That's never going to change. You just simply have to realize that there are going to be days like this in that these days are short. And at some point in time, they will go away. And you'll be back to sort of working again. You just, you know, just got to focus, focus. And this is the hard part. The, the times when you're not feeling bad is when you're focusing on your work. It, the, the bad times usually come, ironically, when you have enough chance to, when you, it's after you relax, and this is what I'm watching here now, I've watched you do this. Your issues with what the choices that you made, your fatigue, come once you've relaxed enough. And you start thinking, you have a chance to start thinking about the things you've done. While you're at work and going through all that, that, that exhaustion and actually having to go through work, you're so focused on the work and the, and the adrenaline you need to push yourself through it. You're not thinking about the fatigue and tiredness. That comes later on after you're relaxing. So this is something that you've got to realize that, that every time you relax, every time you sort of take time off, that these feelings are going to hit every single time. And as long as you understand that these are normal feelings uh, and that people who are in this type of field get this way, uh, then you'll be all right and you, you can continue moving forward. And the thing is, just because you switch fields and do something more normal doesn't necessarily mean these feelings are going to go away either. There are other stresses and other risks in any field that you choose, whether you like the field or not. Anyways, I thought I'd leave you with that. Uh, I hope this helps. Uh, have a great day. Uh, and uh, I'll see you and everybody else on YouTube for VEDA 17 tomorrow. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.